This is Hannah, and today I'm going to be teaching a model lesson on phoneme awareness. And I am going to be implementing this book right here, Muba La La La, as well as some familiar things for children to allow them to be engaged in the lesson. And they even have something that they want to pet or look at during the reading. And a few more just so they have something that they're comfortable with, as well as just something engaging. Maybe there's something they haven't seen or something that they have seen. So a few points before we get started with this. Um, I am a teacher, so this is always something that even as a fifth grade teacher is so important for children to be able to have this skill in their back pocket when they come across new words, being able to break apart that word into individual phonemes as well as, again, to blend that word once they have um, made the decision. I guess this is the correct pronunciation of that phoneme. And they've been able to read that word and be able to understand it in context. Being able to move from just kind of individual words, maybe a couple words on a page with a decodable text, into more academic language with word problems and science information, history, being able to use what they know with that. So, going to be reading this. My friends are going to be listening. So you could, as a parent, again, have something like this or maybe a, something new that's special that they um, want to look at and are feel comfortable with. So this might be something new to them. Use this text if you wanted to use a different one that they don't know or maybe they do know as something that's comfortable, yet we're going to extend that knowledge and challenge them a little bit with what we have planned for us today. So I'd first complete my read aloud of this book. I'm going to point out a few key, key words that we're going to be using in our last portion of this lesson. So anytime with a book, I'm making sure that I'm continuing print con concepts. This is the front of my text. This is my title, Moo, Ba, La, La, La. This is my author. See my pictures? That kind of gives me an indication of what's going to be happening in the book. This is my spine of the book. Again, it is telling me my title as well as my author and in the back this is some other books by this author maybe if your child likes the first one they can pick out one of this to go to the library and get or maybe when school starts back they could go pick this out on the first day of school and have something to read when you come home that night so again opening the book up making sure the words are legible they're in the correct they're not upside down they're not wacky they're ready to read so a cow says Moo. We're going to come back to that word cow later. A sheep says ba. Three singing pigs say la la la. I see an exclamation point there. And this, since this lesson is geared towards K through 2, it's always good to point out exclamation point. That means it is differing from a period. My, um, going to be saying this a little bit different but still continue to be fluent. I'm just going to change my expression just a little bit. And then another thing I can use across the curriculum is counting one, two, three pigs. Right here, I see some quotations. No, no. I see a comma right there. You say, we use the period. That isn't right. The pigs say, oink. One, two, three pigs. All day and night? Rhinoceros snort and snuff, and little dogs go rough, rough, rough. So you might ask, why are there three roughs? Well, we have one, two, three dogs. And we have an S on rhinoceros because there's two of those. Turn the page again. Some other dogs go bow, wow, wow. I'm going to come back to dogs. See two dogs using an S to make it plural. So there's two of those. And cats. Can I go back to cats? I see two of those and kittens say meow, exclamation point. Quack, says the duck. And horse says nay. So this time if you wanted to bring back your horse, let them kind of pet on it a little bit. Or if it wants to say nay with the child, it could if it was feeling it. It's quiet now. What do you say? And you could ask, why, why is you all capitalized? Is this talking about you, the reader? 
see a question mark right there, it's asking me a question. We can sit here and name all these different animals and see how many of each that there are. So that would be the end of my read aloud. So then for my next portion, I'm going to be using some Play-Doh. I would limit probably to three or four different colors. However, for each word, we're going to be segmenting and blending if the child wants to do different colors for each animal. That's totally fine. At this time, I would give them a few, maybe a minute to kind of get in here and play with it a little bit with no goal in mind other just to get a feel for it. This is their first time to use Play-Doh in a academic sense. This is a good time to let them play with it, show that it's very malleable before they get started. So then I am going to just be working with the light pink for our purposes today. I'm also going to keep the text nearby because I'm going to continue to point out where these words are in our text. It's a good skill to start pre-teaching, being able to go back in the text, even if it's just to look for one single word, being able to know that it's okay to open that text back up and to go back through that. That's very important to be able to go back. So again, I have my one single color. My first word is going to be cow. So I'm going to have the child just continue playing around with it for just a second. And to make, I'm going to have probably about four dots made. By dots, just kind of little balls like that. So just a few of these made up, ready to go. So that we can continue to use these throughout the lesson. Okay, so then continuing to go back to this word cow, and we're going to, the child and I, to repeat the word to each other and determine how many sounds or how many phonemes we hear in this word. C ow. So then I would have my two dots right here. C ow. O W is making one single phoneme. The c is coming from our C. So c ow, and then cow to blend it together. And then my next one we're going to be using is, we're gonna go look for dogs. These are just words that I have selected because they are pretty one or two phonemes, maybe three. And um, with sheep, this is a um, something I pointed out in the lesson plan that sheep, the sh that comes from sheep is a digraph. So you would not, that can be confusing as a parent that sh, h, huh, those are two, that's not, that should be one. It's not two individual things. So sh is one phoneme. So you would need to just make one single dot for that. And e, p, sh, e, p. So that would be a little bit tricky if you, and it's a good idea to, as a parent, kind of have those, um, I guess phonics can get a little bit tricky having those digraphs even printed out or even they're good to have in the classroom just to make sure that that's not getting confusing. And I listed a few in here, S-H, T-H, C-K, W-H. I said just to name a few because that can get a little bit confusing. And if we wanted to do cats, I'm going to bring my, back my friend Cat and see if that the cat, the Calico Cat, wanted to help me with Cat, with segmenting and blending that. Even or if you wanted to bring back a different farm animal, being able to do that. So, k at I'm not going to use the S. Just We'll just do a single cat. k at And then cat. And then if they want to press on those, or if they even wanted to use a... Um, game chips, they wanted to use Legos, um, anything they wanted to use or if they wanted to use the cat and be able to segment it, k at, and then cat, anything like that is great. And there are some good apps I have found on here. I've included it in the link. It's a phonemic awareness app I have looked up. Those are great. Just download on your phone and being able to practice on the way to a practice or whatever it might be.